Did you know it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit right now where I'm standing? That's the temperature that water boils at. And when nighttime rolls around here on the moon, it'll get down to as low as minus 278 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to freeze gasoline, alcohol, and carbon dioxide. What? Those are over 450 degrees apart? Now that's extreme. That's because the moon gets the full force of the sun's energy when it's daytime. A little of the energy is reflected right back out into space from the moon's surface. The rest of the energy coming in is absorbed by the moon's surface, then re-radiated back out into space, mostly as heat, or the fancy term for it, thermal infrared radiation. Right now, where Alejandro is standing on the moon, he's feeling both the direct radiation and the re-radiated heat. Dang, how are you not boiling right now? That's a good question. I mean, I feel okay. But wait, why is it not the same temperature where you are on Earth? I mean, aren't we about the same distance from the sun? That's right, and that means the incoming solar energy is the same for both. But what happens to that incoming energy is very different. There's a lot of factors that affect that energy here on Earth, but the biggest contributor to our comfy climate is the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere reflects almost one-fourth of the incoming solar radiation right back out to space. But it does absorb some of it, which is then re-radiated either out into space or back down to the Earth's surface as heat. The atmosphere also absorbs energy that comes up from the Earth's surface through things like evaporation and the Earth's re-radiation of, that fancy scientific term again, thermal infrared radiation. Certain gases in the atmosphere, called greenhouse gases, are really good at absorbing thermal infrared radiation coming up from the Earth's surface. When the gases absorb energy, their temperature rises and they radiate heat out in all directions, including down to the Earth's surface. CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Even without people, there was CO2 in the atmosphere. The more CO2 we put into the atmosphere, it warms. Then what happens there is that there's more evaporation and there's more water vapor in the air. And so then water vapor, being another very effective greenhouse gas, absorbs the energy. And so that leads to further warming. If the energy coming in from the sun doesn't equal the energy going out into space, it means the planet is either warming or cooling. And there's a lot going on on Earth that affects the energy input and output. It's complex, but if we take a few pieces of it at a time, it might make more sense. A small portion of the incoming radiation from the sun is reflected right back out into space by the Earth's surface. The amount of energy reflected back depends on the albedo, or reflectivity, of the surface. Lighter colored surfaces reflect more than darker surfaces. One of the most reflective surfaces on Earth is ice. When you have a lot of sea ice, you raise the albedo, so the sort of bright ice discounts the dark ocean, so you get a cooling effect from that. But I've heard that sea ice in places like the Arctic is melting because the Earth is warming. This must lower the Earth's albedo. That's true, so the Earth will warm up even more, and we're changing an albedo in other ways. The urban heat island effect is a phenomena that we see where urban environments have a tendency to be warmer than surrounding rural environments because urban spaces typically have darker surfaces such as pavement and so they absorb a lot of incoming radiation. One of the ways that we can make urban environments less warm is by painting every surface white. That would reflect more incoming radiation. Another way would be having a lot more green roofs and while some of the things that affect Earth's energy balance are out of our control, some of the variables we can control. What temperature do you want to live in? How hot is too hot? 